Okay, this video is going to be used to give you an action plan as you plan for your next year going forward. So I've been following, listening, watching lots of different people online, including some friends of mine who are helping other people kind of redesign where they want to go in the new year. And so as we get closer to the new year, to the end of this year and the beginning of the next year, a lot of people have New Year's resolutions, they have um, ideas and frameworks and thoughts and perspectives that they want to keep kind of keep um, front of mind as a focal point to lead out their next steps for the next year, right? So this video that I'm going to share with you today is going to just walk through some quick and simple steps that I like to focus on with, with people um, that I work with in coaching, but also just kind of general frameworks that I use for myself when we reflect on the last year that we've lived in this in this time of our human experience and kind of where we want to go in this next year of our human experience, right? So I'll, we'll kind of walk through three to five different points here and then hopefully give you those tools to think about as you consider redesigning your next future in the next year and um, really set forth some, some great intention in that, okay? So one of the frameworks that I like to use with folks is a lifestyle audit. That lifestyle audit will actually walk through all the different aspects of your life and, in my opinion, wellness to see how well balanced you are and how well appropriate you are actually giving attention in the things that you want to pursue in your life. So how well are you doing with sleep? How well are you doing with career, your relationships, your partnerships, um, your business, your own mental and emotional well-being, your spiritual well-being, your physical health, your nutrition, kind of doing a, a, a pretty solid audit in depth with yourself to see how you are doing in all of these different areas of your health and wellness in your own lifestyle to see okay are there areas that you're neglecting are there areas that you've neglected over the last year that you would like to bring back up to um, a higher position or actually elevate and improve are there areas in which you had actually set forth intention last year that you wanted to improve and they just went by the wayside because you had things that came up you had a family member that got sick um, maybe you had a, a child that got sick for a while and you kind of neglected yourself in, in order to take care of them for a while, which is very common. And so as we kind of look towards rebuilding for the future and changing maybe where we are now and set forth a new vision for the next year, I just like to do a, a lifestyle audit with people to help them kind of walk through where have I been, where am I at, and where do I want to go? And then compare and contrast what has worked well in my journey, what has been challenging in my journey, what tools and techniques and tips and hints can I then leverage to help me get where I want to go in a better way. This is kind of like a very simplified coaching method um, that is used a lot of times, but it, it's, it works really, really well. And it's, it's used a lot because it works really, really well. So you can do this by yourself. You can do this with a friend. You can do this with a family member as a trusted colleague or something like that. Um, so just spending the time in the trenches to actually do the deeper work to kind of wrestle and walk through some of those things to see like where you have, have actually failed, to see where you have actually had success and maybe even an unexpected success. Okay. So as part of that lifestyle audit, it's also going to include more of a time audit. That time audit looks like, okay, walking through the last 24 hours of your day or the average of the last two weeks and to say, okay, how much time, energy, focus, and your overall attention are you giving to these different areas of your life? How much time are you spending on your phone, on your tablet, on your computer, in your sleep, in nature? How many hours of a day are you spending in these different areas of your life? And is that where you want to show up? Are you giving enough time to your relationships? Are you giving enough time to your kids? Are you, giving, are you giving enough time to yourself? Perhaps none of these things are actually in balance in comparison to where you feel most aligned. And so if we do believe, which I do believe, that the body can heal itself whenever we give it the best chance with that alignment to allow the energy flows to happen best, that alignment in our lifestyle compared to our actual personal values and our personal ethics allows for those things to be kind of prompted to support our actual pathways inside of our body as an external manifestation of healing on the outside in a very complicated manner um, but in a simplified manner okay if we if our actions match our words and our words match our intentions on the inside of what we really want to do 
then all of those things can be aligned, right? And that's, that's kind of our best flow state of how we want to live our lives together. So whenever we have those things aligned, we're kind of on point. We're kind of ready at the, at, uh, kind of moving forward in our life in the way in which we really want to live and really want to show up in the world. And that's kind of how we all want to show up. That's how we want to best live and serve and, and give and receive in this world. And so if we can give ourselves the time and attention to do that with a lifestyle audit and a time audit and to really push back the hours that we're just consuming social media or the hours that we're getting kind of frustrated and, and dealing with all the emotional chaos of news and media cycles that are literally designed to, to make you frustrated and to grab your attention, then we can kind of own that attention back. We can take back some of that attention. We can start to have greater control over our news consumption, take greater control over our own personal health and wellness, as well as our mind, body, and spirit connections better improve through that as we gain better insight and, and awareness for our own, our own journey on this planet. And so there are many things across our day. We all have 24 hours, right? But many things across our day that take our attention, that literally pull our attention away from us, being able to connect with our own body and with our own self and our own decision making. And so that could look like any number of different forms of different kinds of substances or different things that grab your attention or things that are driving your dopamine signals one way or the other, right? And so giving a time audit to yourself as a gift, right? Happy Thanksgiving, happy, happy Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy holidays. Give yourself the gift of doing this, just spending two to three hours walking through this exercise to see where you are today compared to where you have been compared to where you want to go, right? To see what changes need to be made in that time audit so then you can accomplish the goals that you really want to set for yourself. And so as I transition from the lifestyle audit to the time audit, I'm also now going to talk a little bit more about setting forth proper goals for your future, okay? So part of proper goal setting is not to be extremely... Um, kind of dim dismissive on what you can achieve. So we don't want to set goals too low because then it's like, okay, what's the point? And then you, never, you, then you never have like a drive to actually accomplish anything. You also don't want to make a goal that's extremely too lofty to where, they, to where then you become depressed because you are not able to achieve it. You want to set a goal that's around 60 to 80%, maybe 50 to 80% of what you can accomplish. So you actually have something to strive after. That's a pretty good um, goal to, to actually strive for a, a pretty good change in where you are now to where you want to go, but it's not going to be a hundred or two hundred percent compared to where you are today as a as a, as a change, right? You also don't want to set a goal that's twenty percent of a change compared to where you are today because it's like, well, yeah, you could probably accomplish that in two months over the over the course of the year if you really put forth the time and attention for it. So you're kind of not actually living up to your potential, and so. If you strive for a really solid goal that's been planned in a really solid way where you can say, okay, this is not too little of a goal or too much of a goal, but it's just kind of that Goldilocks step of between 50 to 80% of something that's really accomplishable for you, but yet really challenging, but yet something that you really, really want to do, right? So if you give yourself that proper goal setting framework, then it can help motivate you challenge you and give you something to look forward to at the end of the day whenever you actually cross that finish line because let's say you you have never been running um, over the last three months you used to run years ago you want to run a, a, a 5k or a half marathon right so you don't want to set a goal to say okay i'm going to get back into running i'm going to run a marathon like a full marathon next month that's that's 200 percent compared to where you are today that's a giant leap compared to where you are so that's, that's an improper goal. It's too lofty of a goal. You also don't want to say, I want to run around the block by next month. That's too little of a goal. So finding that Goldilocks stage might say, okay, I'm going to run a 5K in a month. I'm going to run a half marathon in three months. I'm going to run a full marathon in a year to two years. That might be a more... Uh, that might be a better goal setting framework to give you some sort of stepwise increase towards that challenge the growth that you'll achieve through that challenge 
and accomplishing uh, your goal across the finish line at each step of the way to then re-incentivize and reinforce the steps that you've taken to then continue your motivation for that kind of further goal down the road with the full marathon, right? So that's the power of proper goal setting. That way it's not too little and not too much. That way you continue to take progressive steps in the right direction and not feel depressed because you aren't accomplishing anything that you set your mind to. And, um, and it's not too little to where you're setting yourself up for kind of not living to your full potential. And I could break that down into many other different frameworks and details to actually help you take baby steps in that direction. Um, good book, Atomic Habits. Everybody loves Atomic Habits by, by James Clear. Yes, it's a great book. It can really help you um, take tiny steps into making small goals into big goals and, and big changes in your life, right? So that's a great technique. The other thing that I'm going to mention now is with respect to the time audit, the lifestyle audit that we made, and then proper goal setting, we need to be able to have intentional attention. Because in our modern day era that we live in today, it's estimated that people on average see anywhere from, I've seen numbers from like 3,000 to 14,000 different advertisements every single day. So it's kind of wild to think about, but there are thousands of things that are grabbing our attention on a daily basis. And so what we need to do is like intentionally fight against that and hold our attention with intention for what we actually want to strive after, right? Because if there's 14,000 advertisements grabbing our attention, those are just advertisements. That's not the crying baby in the back seat. That's not somebody that's asking for your attention at work. That's not the, the pings, dings, and notifications necessarily that are on your phone. There are thousands of things that are driving our attention every single day away from really our own self from our own mind body spirit connection and perhaps our intentional goals that we want to set forth for our lives and how we want to show up in the world and so if we can then resettle ourselves calm down our nervous systems slow down a little bit to allow the time and energy and focus to interrogate where our attention is going in order to then reset forth into the future better intention for where our attention can go then our goal setting framework will make a lot more sense because otherwise our attention will just go in whatever direction the next ping ding ring notification the next flashing light the next flashing symbol the next flashing color will ask our attention to go and different people have different levels of susceptibility for how easily and how quickly, how swiftly their attention can just be pulled in and taken down a whole long journey, right? So let's say, for instance, with ADHD, a topic that I love to talk to people about, right? And I love to help people with. That's a very common symptomology where someone's attention can be grabbed very quickly and then taken away from their actual intention, Okay, why do they actually get onto their phone? Why do they actually pick up the newsletter? Why do they actually start to get, jump onto their computer? They lost their attention. They lost their focus because it was pulled in so many different directions. So we can set better goals, develop a better lifestyle alignment with our time audit, with our lifestyle audit, with proper goal setting if we continue to be intentional about our attention each day, each week, Personally, I think it's a helpful technique to use this as a weekend activity to see and, and to check in with yourself how well you are doing with setting forth intention with your attention that you have throughout the week because we only, only have so much. Um, there's a lot of analysis paralysis that we deal with today because cognitively and psychologically, there's all these different frameworks and ways in which advertising and media and marketing have kind of paralyzed you and petrified you with the overabundance of choice, which then kind of makes you afraid and panicked and then you're not able to actually make a, a proper decision. That's actually how you want to show up in the world because you're just terrified by all the different options, right? And so intention with your attention, that way you're not just constantly distracted by everything and then being pulled in a thousand different directions. The last thing that I will mention now is not the time audit, not the lifestyle audit, not the, um, not the opportunity to set proper goals or intention with our attention because it's all the things that we already talked about as a reminder. But this last part now is what I'm kind of just going to call an awakening for deeper ethical, moral values. 
because I think there's a lot of people that are at this stage nowadays over the last three to four years where we have had to interrogate our own self, our own beliefs, our own thoughts and feelings and values and perspectives on so many things with respect to kind of where we've gone over the last three, four, three to four years, right? So we've had to really ask ourselves, why do I believe the thing that I say that I believe? Why do I want to behave in the way that I think that I should behave in this moment? Why do I want to have this opinion in comparison to what I've been told to believe? We have all had to look ourselves in the mirror and discuss with other people, why does all this matter? Why do all these different opinions, why do all these different thoughts and feelings and emotions in media, in our lifestyles, at the dinner table, at work, why do all these things really matter? Why do I feel so passionate about my opinions? Do my opinions even matter? Where am I actually standing on with my foundational ideas on these, on these perspectives, right? So whenever I was growing up in high school, there was this giant kind of surge, um, at least in the time culturally, it felt like everybody was just like really just thriving towards an endless hedonic treadmill, right? So there was this giant push for YOLO. You only live once. Everybody was just chasing, living for pleasure, living for yourself, chasing whatever made you feel comfortable, whatever made you feel good, whatever made you feel satisfied in life, right? So chase whatever you want, live like there's no tomorrow, you only live once, have all the fun you want, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about all the consequences, don't worry about all of the, the side effects, don't worry about um, having actually like any intentional proactive decision making for the future, <laughs> just do what you want to do now in the moment. And that's, a, my opinion, probably the truth as well. It's a terrible framework to to lead young young kids, right? So whenever I was in high school, that was really rising up a lot. And I think we also see that somewhat in the millennial generation too, that everybody jokes around about that they're kind of lost in a little bit of a ideological framework because they were led way too far into the, into the YOLO um, model for living their life culturally. That's just, it's not my opinion, that's just something that's been observed. And so now nowadays, I think we're kind of at this stage where everybody's like, you know, YOLO didn't work out. <laughs> um, I think YOLO didn't work out for anybody. I'm watching other people not have any good framework, no good foundations. They don't really know why they believe what they believe. I'd rather have a solid foundation for my opinions. I'd rather have a solid foundation. That way, if anybody comes to ask me, I can be prepared. I can be at the ready. I have a reason to stand up for what I believe in, right? That way, if you're questioning about this thing about your health and wellness, if you're questioning about that thing about your faith or religion or your perspective on how humans should be able to interact in their community without certain supplies or or other things right so fill in the gaps i'm sure you can fill in the gaps yourself and so if we can then understand the chance that we have to interrogate our own ideas to to sit with ourselves to look in the mirror to really decide our morals our ethics our values how we want to live and why we want to live that way why do we believe the way that we believe about all of these different ideas and perspectives that culturally, um, socio socially, economically, all of these different um, organizational ideas are then being pushed forth over the last few years, right? So there just seems like there's this tidal wave of ideas that's coming at us and just all of this giant wave of information that's over overwhelming us as humans at the individual level. And so what do we do with all those things? What do we tie ourselves to? What do we climb up? What do we build in order to use as a solid framework to withstand the tidal wave? To actually be able to stand above the tidal wave, right? To be able to withstand any push of information that feels false, that feels un untrue, to feel like, like, like it lacks evidence, or it just doesn't stand in the way that we want to stand in the world, right? And we will let it go by us. We don't have to necessarily get super worried about it. Maybe we want to talk about it every once in a while, but we don't necessarily need to be needing to be extremely overthinking about this thing because we also know like where we stand and why we stand for what we stand. And so I've been someone my whole life kind of abnormally 
where I've always been like, okay, I need to have a thousand degrees of information behind the scenes of why I believe what I believe. So I, I understand I'm abnormal in that way, and that's fine. But what I also understand is that it's beneficial for us to know why we believe and, and kind of why we stand up for the things that we want to talk about and the, and the way that we think about things, right? So if you have a certain philosophy around food and nutrition, or if you have a certain philosophy around faith and religion, or a certain philosophy around why you should wake up at this time of the day, or why you should go to sleep at that time of the day, or how you show up at work, then have a reason to stand up for that. Have a reason behind the scenes that is your foundational framework, your ideas, the information that has led you to, led you to believe that thing to be true. So I say all this because I think whenever I was growing up, YOLO was all, all across the scene. I thought it was extremely frustrating and kind of depressing because I was like, all oh, these people are just chasing the hedonic treadmill. They're going to get exhausted. They're going to get, they're going to feel ruined with their emotions and mental health. And they're not actually able to like align themselves with something that is grounded and they can feel strong with and confident and, and supported with reinforced. Right. And again, I know I'm, I know I am abnormal in that. Right. But Again, I think it's a solid framework that makes a lot of sense. And so I'm not saying, hey, do as I do. I'm just saying, hey, I think this framework makes sense in general for most things. And so in comparison to YOLO, as we set forth intention for the next year, really sitting with ourselves and saying, okay, with all the things that I've been told to believe, what do I actually believe? What do I actually want to believe? And having a resource, having a framework, having behind the scenes information to reinforce your belief system, I think is, is extremely helpful. And to actually interrogate yourself, sit with yourself and to say, okay, in my mind, I'll just say this, in my mind, sitting with yourself and fully understanding your own perspective on the inside and challenging yourself in a way in which I would challenge any college student or high school student in this way, in a world that is pulling and, and craving, driving your attention away from you. You have to consistently fight, your, fight for your attention to drive towards the things that are never changing. Drive your attention to better understand the things that are unwavering. To question and to interrogate, to explore, to adventure, to discover all of the things in which you can understand that are true, that are noble, that are valuable, that are meaningful, that are unwavering, that have tested the, that have tested the time, that have uh, ah the phrase is not is going to lose me right now. Um, the things that have lasted for over time, right? So the things that have been here historically, the things that have been have remained true for humans over thousands of years, the things that are never going to change, and the ways in which our society is best supported to live, to thrive with one another in community, perhaps, is maybe one of those things. What are the things in which you have been told that actually feel false, that lack evidence, that kind of are built on quicksand instead of a solid brick or cement framework? What are ways in which you can actually reinforce your own belief systems to know why you believe what you believe? Maybe you need to ask like a thousand more questions about this thing that you thought that you believed in order to actually know if you believe that thing. Because a lot of times we're just products of our own environment and we're just regurgitating something that we've been told, right? So go on your own journey to better understand all of these different things and the depths to those things that you say that you believe, that you've been told to believe, the things that you think that you believe. In comparison to YOLO, because I think YOLO was pushing people towards focusing their attention on all the things that actually don't matter. Those things might be fun. Those things might last for a temporary time amount of time for pleasure or whatever else you want to call it but they're not going to last. And so at some point over the last three to four years, I think there has been a great awakening for individuals who are trying to refocus their attention on things that they would intentionally like to pursue that are true, noble, valid, valuable, that stand the test of time. There we go. That's the phrase I was looking for. That are actually very, very meaningful for them in their lives. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to 
who have been like, oh, you know how great it would be if like I just got like 12 friends of mine and our families and we built like a commune and we all lived off the land and off the grid. We had like our own garden. We had our own teachers. We had our own school. We had our own physical fitness activities and all this different stuff. I'm like, yeah, that'd be great. Like, yeah, all of that sounds fun and, and enjoyable and awesome and, and, and solid, right? But you have to understand, like, those people who probably have never even thought those things existed would never have even fathomed with their imagination to build that kind of a lifestyle outside of the last three to four years. That tells you that the last three to four years has then sparked all of this different thought perspective for them that has then led them to want to design their life in a different way because they're pursuing something that's actually meaningful, because they're pursuing something that's actually purposeful that they want to build for the future. But they wouldn't be able to do that if they didn't use a framework. They wouldn't be able to do that if they just nonchalantly went after goals, nonchalantly allowed their attention to go in whatever direction. No, those people that are actually redesigning, revisioning their life for the future, they're setting forth attention. They're setting forth intention with their attention. They're doing frameworks by themselves, with family members, with friends, with colleagues, with people that are going to help them grow, with mentors, with teachers, right? With coaches. They're investing the time, energy, and focus mentally, emotionally, physically, socially, economically in order to push themselves further in this world that's consistently and constantly pushing them away from their actual goals. Like I said, that tidal wave is coming. That tidal wave of information, of emotional kind of cacophony on social media or news and media today is pushing you down and it's heavy. It's never uplifting. I, I think about that. News and media is highly, like very rarely ever uplifting to you as like as a spiritual person. You are a human creature. That human creature has a capacity for spiritual awareness. News and media has never, maybe, maybe has never is too much, does not regularly uplift your spiritual awareness that is not something it does right that is not it that is not its business model its business model is to shove you down in order to make you insecure to drive more attention for you going forward in the future that way you depend on the news more you depend on the information more and all the things right i could go into further details of that but that's not my goal today my goal today is to actually give you a framework to help you set forth intentional decision making to redesign, to revision your life going forward for the future. So the things I've talked about today, I've been a little bit more long-winded than I wanted to, but the things that I've talked about today would be the lifestyle audit to look at all the different parameters of your actual life and wellness and, and all the things in your life that you want to pursue, that you have pursued in the past to compare where you have been, where you are today, and where you want to go. Then looking more at a detailed approach on a time audit for your last 24 hours, the last two weeks, and just in general, the ways in which you typically spend your time to see if those things match where you actually want to go and then what needs to change. Then understanding proper goal setting, striving for a goal that's not too much, not too little, but it's in that perfect middle range that's both challenging you, helping you grow, and reinforcing your steps moving forward. And then I kind of talked about more of that YOLO perspective of which I grew up with, and then maybe you did as well, or you you at least observed perhaps. And so it's like kind of that raging 1920s vibe where everybody was just kind of doing their own thing. And it didn't really lead to a lot of depth. It didn't really lead to a lot of meaningful pursuits, a lot of great developments. And so over the last three to four years, we've really reawakened ourselves, many of us, not all of us, but some of us, to truly, truly sit with ourselves and say, what does all this really mean? What what do I really believe? What do I really want to believe? How do I really want to live my life? Who are the people that I really want to live my life with? So this is just one small comprehensive framework, one small aspect of some of the ideas and topics and, and conversations that I have with people whenever I'm talking about revisioning for the future, kind of really having that lifestyle alignment that I think is so powerful for us across our mind-body-spirit connection and how we show up in the world for ourselves and for others. This is just one aspect I might share or actually even create more videos in the future about some of these things. If you like this, I would love to hear some feedback. I would love to see some likes, some comments, uh, some shares on social media. That way we can actually share something a little bit more positive and uplifting and promotional to help more people, right? To get more people to see 
uh, more positive messages as well. So if you think any of this made sense, if you want to spend more time with this yourself or even with, with me as a supportive guide along the way, I'm more than happy to help. But in general, I would just really enjoy to see some comments or some feedback to see what made sense for you, um, what things you like the most, maybe some pushback even to me to say, okay, I didn't like this part. I would reframe it like this. I would rephrase it like this. I would maybe say this instead of that. Um, or maybe you wanted me to spend more more attention and more time on a specific area that I maybe went over really, really, really uh, quickly, right? So maybe you wanted me to dive into more detail with certain things, which is great. All that feedback is extremely helpful. So I'm gonna share this video. So wherever you see this video, I don't know how you're gonna see this yet, but I'll probably share it across all the different networks. Um, I just wanna thank you for your time in which you've spent watching this video and dealing with me talking very fast and then changing my change up my tone every once in a while and then kind of slurring over my words, which I do because I have a lot of thoughts all at once. So I appreciate your patience in that. I appreciate your time and attention spending with me in this moment. Um, your time is very valuable to me. Your attention is very valuable to me. And so I don't want to take it for granted. I want to appreciate it for what it's worth and uh, its value to me in my life because you know, I mean, I, I just spent whatever time this was for this video. And I mean, my, my hope is that it leads others to something that's more better for them in their life, right? So whatever comments you want to share, I'm willing to hear it out. If it's like, oh, you're extremely upset and you want to talk to me about you thought all this stuff was garbage, maybe send me a private message about that instead of posting that online. That would be kind of helpful for me and probably everybody else, perhaps. Um, we can talk through some of those things. So... Um, I fully understand. I fully expect everybody to be respectful. I'm just kind of joking here. But again, I just want to thank you for your time. Please like, please share, please comment, please um, give me some feedback on some of these ideas. And if you like this content, um, I'd be happy to share more content on these, some of these things because I have a lot of thoughts, a lot of in-depth ideas on most things in this life. Don't often dive into things that are more philosophical or, ex or existential or kind of more of the spiritual awareness side of things. But um, I dive into those topics on a regular basis. Personally, I just don't often share it online. So um, let me know what you think, and um, I'll see you next time, I guess. All right, thanks.